Octopus have three hearts? Really? Hey guys, it's Brandon, and welcome back to another episode of Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. Today we will be discovering the giant Pacific octopus. Today we will be learning about their habitat distribution, their physical features, and some fun facts and stories about the intelligent octopus. Today we will need to go to an aquarium, or we will need to use our scuba gear on this adventure. So get your wetsuit, fins, mask, tank, and respirator so that we can go on this adventure. Make sure to go with a buddy when you're diving. Are you ready? Let's dive in. The giant Pacific octopus makes its home in the cold, oxygen-rich waters of the North Pacific Ocean. Its habitat reaches from California to Alaska in the Eastern Pacific and from Russia to Korea in the Western Pacific. The giant Pacific octopus prefers water that is between 10 and 14 degrees Celsius and range in depth from the intertidal to 2,000 meters. Although being very curious, the octopus is also very shy. Octopus like living in cracks in rocks or in caves and are pri primarily nocturnal. But that isn't all. They are masters of camouflage. They can change the texture, color, and size of their skin to match their surroundings using little pigment sacs and iridescent like layers to catch their different light and change their colors. The giant Pacific octopus is the largest of all the species of octopus. On average, they weigh 15 kilograms or 33 pounds and can grow to a total arm length of 4.3 meters or 14 feet. The largest adults can reach 50 kilograms, 110 pounds and an arm span of 6 meters, so that's 20 feet. So seeing these animals in the wild is truly a treat. Octopus got their name from the Greek word octopus or octopod, which means 8 foot. This is because octopus have 8 arms. Since this is a Greek word, its plural needs to follow Greek rules. I have heard and even used octopi, octopodes, and even James Bond's octopussy. However, we need to remember that it is a Greek word and so we can't use Latin plurals. So all we need to do is add an ES to the ending, making it octopuses. So now you, can, now you know, a group of octopus are called octopuses. Talking about plurals, let's get into some fun plural facts. I touched on this in my intro. But how many hearts does an octopus have? Now the fact that I'm even asking how many hearts it has should raise some questions. Turns out that the octopus have three hearts. One heart is for the central organ and is known as the organ heart. The other two are two chambered hearts that keep blood flowing to the arms. Now let me ask you another question. What color is octopus blood? This should also raise some questions like, why am I asking this? Is this a trick question? Isn't all blood red? Well, the answer to that is blue. Octopus have blue blood. The reason for this is that their blood is copper based and not iron based like our blood. I have another question for you about octopus. You know there are many plurals going on in an octopus. Eight arms, two eyes, three hearts, etc. Now octopus are very intelligent. The next question is about their brain. How many brains does an octopus have? See, that's also a strange question. But it turns out that they have nine brains in total, one for each arm and a central brain in the mantle. This gives every arm its own brain and nervous system so that it, every arm can do its own thing while the main brain is do, off doing something else. Octopus have rectangular eyes and can see differently than humans. Octopus love looking into our the eyes of humans. They seek out our eyes for some reason. Cameras don't have the same effect on them. They might avert their eyes to a camera but will seek out the eyes and seek out a direct contact from, from a human's eyes. The octopus also have their own personality and can be recognize several humans. 
that interact with them on a regular basis. They may splash water, change their skin color or texture for a certain person, and that might be their response to that person for every single encounter that they have. Octopus are very intelligent and thought to be the most intelligent invertebrate in the world. They can solve a maze, open childproof containers, recognize people, take things apart for fun, and use tools. Each arm has anywhere between 200 and 240 suction cups along it. Each arm has two rows of suction cups. The largest suckers can measure 2.5 inches in diameter and can hold 16 kilograms or 35 pounds each. So if an octopus decides to interact with you and suck onto your skin, it will leave hickeys. Here is another fun fact about octopus. When they are sucking onto objects, they are actually tasting that object. Each sucker has the ability to taste, so the way an octopus says hello is by tasting them. If the octopus doesn't like how you taste, it will go away and hide. But if it likes you, it will want to explore further and figure out what you are. You don't need to worry about octopus eating you. They don't eat people. The only hard part of an octopus is its beak. The rest is very soft tissue and it can anything that its beak can fit into, its arms and its body can fit into as well. It is similar to the beak of a parrot and very powerful. The octopus eats crustaceans like Dungeness crab, shrimp, oysters, clams, and small fish. But it has been said that an octopus has fed on spiny dogfish, small sharks, and even a case where it caught a seagull. Now that we know what octopus eat, it is time to discover what eat octopus. When octopus hatch out of their eggs, they are the size of a grain of rice. This leaves a small octopus vulnerable to zooplankton, to zooplankton eaters, small fish, scavengers, and birds. When they are adults, they become prey to marine mammals like sea lions, harbor seals, sea otters, and some whales like sperm whales, and humans. I personally can't eat octopus because they are a mollusk and they eat all the things that I'm allergic to. But I hear that if prepared correctly, it can be a tasty treat. Now we will move on to our next segment, where we look at, at the health of the giant Pacific octopus. There have not been any studies by the IUCN Red List, and that's the, if you remember, that's the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, CITES, or the Monterey Bay Aquarium. These are our primary sources for looking at population health of aquatic organisms. The octopus are primarily solitary creatures and can't be assessed the same way fish can be counted but it is believed that their population is doing well for the moment. However, with ocean acidification, global sea temperature rising, overfishing, and pollution, the future of the octopus doesn't look good. The health of our ocean shows the health of our planet. Octopus are curious, look to us, and want to interact with us. If we want to interact with them for a long time, we need to care about our oceans. Looks like we're all out of time for this adventure. Let's put away our gear and review our discoveries that we made today. Today we learned that octopus have three hearts, nine brains, eight arms, rectangular eyes, are curious, and they can taste with their suckers. I want to thank you all for coming on this adventure with me. I hope you learned something new. I know I did. I love hearing your stories and hearing your encounters with octopus. And if you have any of those, or if you just want to talk to people about the octopus, make sure to leave those comments down below. It's really fun reading your comments and hearing stories from people that I meet. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more content. Also, if you learned something new or made a new discovery, share that discovery with somebody else because it's a lot more fun to go on an adventure with somebody else and to teach them about that discovery or tell them tell stories about this that discovery than doing it alone. If you want to purchase my paintings, I have originals and prints for sale. I'm working on my website right now that that will have a store feature, but I don't have that up right right now. I am working on it. It's taking some time, but if you want to purchase some of that stuff, just ask. Um, follow me on my Instagram. You can contact me on my 
you can contact me on my social media. So my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Google Plus, and my Twitter. I use all of these platforms, but I use Instagram a little more often than I use the rest. I can't do this project without your involvement, and so I really need your feedback, and I need my people, and I need my community to help me, and that's you guys. Again, I want to say thanks for watching. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.